Hello everyone, welcome to Yoga Upload. I'm Maris Ilward. Today's video is the first video of the Vinyasa Essentials tutorial series. It's all about downward facing dog. This is for both beginners and intermediate students. For the beginners, we'll talk about the basic shape of the pose and how to get into it, and also the common issues that beginners struggle with in this pose. Now for the intermediate students, we'll talk about how to get deeper into the pose, how to make it feel even better, and how to make sure that our yoga practice is safe and sustainable. That's all coming up next. Now this first part is for the absolute beginner. You've never done downward facing dog before, or maybe you've done it a few times, but you're not really sure about what you're doing. So where do you even start? Come to all fours and bring your knees about hip distance apart and your hands about shoulder distance apart. Now walk your hands forward a few inches so your wrists are not directly under your shoulders. They're gonna be a few inches forward of your shoulders. Now spread your fingers nice and wide so you have a good base, a good foundation for your downward facing dog and firmly press your hands down towards the mat. Now tuck your toes under and lift your hips up towards the ceiling. Press your thighs towards the back of your mat and press your heels down towards the floor. Even if they don't reach the floor, it's okay. Make sure the head is relaxed. So this is the basic shape. It's like an inverted letter V, a triangle shape with your body. And go for length in both your upper body and your lower body. Now this is all nice and well when we're looking at it, but the truth is, most of us don't start out looking that way. And sometimes it's a question of the right stance for your downward facing dog. Sometimes the downward facing dog is too short. Sometimes the downward facing dog is too long. So what's the solution? I suggest you do the plank test, okay? So come to your plank pose. Your shoulders are stacked over your wrists and your heels are stacked over the balls of the feet or your toes. Now, if you wave back to a downward facing dog from this position, you should be in a pretty good place for your downward facing dog with maybe just minor adjustments. If the downward facing dog is too short, when you wave forward to a plank, your shoulders will be shooting way forward of your wrists. If the downward facing dog is too long and you wave forward to plank, you won't even get there. Your shoulders are way behind of your wrists. So that's just a good test to see if you have the right length of your downward facing dog. Now here are some other common issues for beginners. I see this a lot in my class. New students tend to round their spine in their downward facing dog and struggle with the position of the legs and mostly because of tightness in the hamstrings or the calves. Now keep this in mind, your heels don't have to touch the floor. So it's okay to keep the knees a little soft and that will allow you to lengthen your spine more. So prioritize the length of your upper body from your tailbone to the crown of your head. Push the floor away with your hands and the shoulders are, are away from your ears, relax your head. Reach your sitting bones up towards the sky, okay? And to avoid that rounding in your back, think of pressing your chest towards your thighs as you press your thighs towards the back of your mat. So if you're just starting out with your yoga practice, keep working on those things. And even after you've been practicing for a while, there are still some issues in downward facing dog. And the most common thing that I hear from my students is it puts a lot of pressure, a lot of weight on their wrists and their shoulders and just their arms in general. So how do you avoid dumping all your weight on your arms and your hands? That's where part two comes in. Now, I'm gonna be honest, this might be more information than you want to hear right now, but I encourage you to stick with me here, okay? And try this out, see if there's any improvements. We'll start with our hands, with our foundation. So basic instruction is to just spread your fingers wide, right? Now refine that even more. Press on your finger pads, all five, and think about the center of your palm as a little suction cup. So spread the fingers, 
and I'll exaggerate so you can see it on the camera. Really draw energy up the center of the palm, like a little suction. So think of something under your hand that you're trying to protect, but the finger pads are firmly rooted to the mat. So in that technique, you're pressing down to draw energy up, and that energy will travel all the way up through your arm, arm through your shoulder. So that should ease some pressure off your wrist. You're not pressing down a lot of weight on the heel of your hand. Now, what are our elbows and our shoulders doing in a downward facing dog? So let's start with the shoulders. We want external rotation in our shoulders. So this is external rotation when you turn the arm bones out and your palms are facing forward. Contrast that to internal rotation, which is when we do this and the palms are facing back. So again, I'm exaggerating so you can see the movement. So we want more external rotation in our downward facing dog. Now, obviously this is not how we do downward facing dog. So what you do, I want you to try this. External rotation, right? Lift up your arm, maintain that external rotation as much as possible, and then turn your palm down. So it's just your forearm that pronates like that. Mm -hmm. So remember that feeling and translate that into your downward facing dog. All right, let's try this. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Do that suction cup action at the center of the palm, hasta banda. Now your wrists are gonna be about parallel to the front edge of your mat. Remember that external rotation in the shoulder that you've been practicing. You're spinning your triceps towards the back. So really activate the triceps. Now be careful with your elbows here. See this, what I'm doing here? The inner creases of the elbow are facing forward so much. This is already hyperextension of your elbow. So you don't want that. Make it a little softer. The arm is straight, but the elbow has a little bit of softness in it so that the inner crease of your elbow or the eye of your elbow is facing more towards your thumb. So that's about a 45 degree angle-ish, all right? Let's put that together. Fingers, suction cup, wrist, Spin the triceps back, external rotation at your shoulders. The elbows aren't locked, but the arms are straight. So press the hands down, tuck the toes under, and come up to your downward facing dog. Shoulders are away from the ears, the neck is long, the head is relaxed. I'm really maintaining that external rotation in the shoulders. And I'm not feeling a lot of weight here on my wrist or the heel of my hand. Now to avoid putting all the weight on the upper body, we need to put weight on the lower body. The legs need to be engaged. So what are we doing from the hips down to the feet? Our hips are gonna be in flexion, like in a forward fold. You tip the pelvis forward. So in a downward facing dog, that means your sitting bones are reaching up towards the ceiling. And there's also internal rotation at the hips. What does that mean? We turn the thigh bones inward, we rotate them inward, and press them back. Now to contrast that with external rotation at your hips, for example, if you're doing a warrior two, right? The front leg in your warrior two is in an external rotation. Mm -hmm. And internal is when you do this. Turn the thigh bones inward. So tuck your toes under, come up. You know that basic instruction, right? So tip the pelvis forward, reach your sitting bones up. And that actually helps you internally rotate from your hips. So your thigh bones are spinning inward, then press your thighs back. Now the legs need to be engaged here. So firm up your quads, pull up your kneecaps, feet are hip distance apart. Make sure they're not turning out or turning in too much. When you're looking at the feet, you can't really see your heels there. They're hidden behind the toes. I hope you try out these little tips and let me know if there's any improvement. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments section below. And if you're a yoga student, this might be enough for you today to just try out these little tweaks, little refinements. Now, if you are an aspiring yoga teacher, for example, then you'll need way more information than what I gave you today. So in the description box below, I'll make a list of the teachers that I follow. I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next time. Namaste.